Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. And guess what, guys? We are going to have a good time today because we are going to be celebrating the nutrition month with a nutritionist which is so awesome besides myself ha <laughs> ha look at that we're going to have another registered well a registered dietitian i'm just a nutrition i'm not a registered dietitian and rebecca shabaya welcome girlfriend how are you doing i'm good thank you thank you for having me I am so excited to talk to you today because, listen, you fascinate me. You are so well cultured. Yes, yes, yes. You graduated in Scotland. I, I mean, Scotland. How was that? Oh, it's a great place. That's where I did my high school and university, yeah. But I have an English accent, so that's going to confuse people. <laughs> literally going to say that. I'm like, wait a minute. So... Where are you originally from? So I was born in England. We moved to Scotland when I was about 11 or 12. But the accent had formed by then. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. You you are so, like I said earlier, well-traveled, well-cultured. And I love that you used all that in your, your company. Your company is Anchored Nutrition Therapy. And I want to know, how did you come up with that name? Well, I like the idea of feeling anchored, you know, like a boat drops an anchor and right. has stability and waves or, you know, a tree has roots because, I don't know, life can throw some curveballs at you. So it's good to have like a sense of being grounded. And I think when you have good, strong foundation of self-care, that gives you the strength to feel grounded. So that's that's the idea behind that name. Anchored. I love it. And and we do it, it's it's so funny because a lot of times when we are feeling disconnected and like we're just blowing in the wind, you know, that's a that's a very scary feeling for a lot of people. So just the fact of being anchored in whatever like you said in your culture in in your beliefs, it's a great feeling and it gives you a sense of strength. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so what's great about this is, you know, you have not only have you been a dietitian, a registered dietitian for 23 years, you uh, you've worked in many clinical areas, you've um, but you've always put in passion for your travel and cuisine and just cooking and exploring. Let me ask you that. How has your background as a registered dietitian influenced your approach on working with clients and understanding their unique stories about their life and food and health? Oh, I love food and culture. I've always been fascinated by food and culture. From childhood and then through university, I mean, and always making friends from different people from around the world. And I, I think my parents used to laugh because I used to come home from university almost, you know, every few weekends with somebody from a different country and they're like, oh, who's she bringing this weekend? <laughs> because, it's, it. because it's fascinating and we can learn so much from everybody, like who we meet and when we travel and even you I mean, it's a blessing to take a flight and go to different countries. And I've been very blessed to go to many countries. But even within the own city that you live in, just visit like global grocery stores, visit local restaurants, ask your neighbors for recipes. And every culture 
has great recipes that we can add to our repertoire. Rebecca, that was a good, good um, suggestion because I I love to travel as well. That's why I was like, I can't wait to talk to her because we travel. I mean, I, I think it's key to human existence of us getting along is to be able to travel to different countries and experience that versus just watching what they highlight on television because what they put on TV and even if it's not just uh, culture, I mean, as a black woman, what they portray on TV is not who we don't even know those black people. We're like, wait a minute, what's going on? I don't I've never seen that. So it's so important for us to travel the world and get to put our on eyeballs on it. But I love the fact that if you cannot travel, there are so many different cultures within your area that you can go to their grocery store and go and and make a connection and a friendship with them and learn to write yeah it's it's a wonderful thing and, and so how even within the states like every region of the states has its own food culture and traditions like northern folks will eat different than people in the south and i'm sure in the black community you have family recipes and traditions passed down for generations I think it's a food is love and food tells us stories I, I, I love of course nourishes us too but yeah go ahead I'm sorry I cut you off what did you say and nourishes us too but I think the enjoyment of it really is really important Right. And that's what I think is so special about you, Rebecca, is that it, we all know that food is, is to nourish our body. But the mindfulness of the cultures actually steps it up to a whole different level when you do that. And I, and, and like kudos to you for doing this, you know, because um, we really don't think about that a lot. And I'm being honest, I don't think about it either. Um, but when you just said how different cultures, even within the state, I talked to my sister today because, you know, it was Super Bowl Sunday. And um, I asked her, what did she bring? And she said, I bring collard greens with pig feet and um, ham hocks. I said, for Super Bowl Sunday, she said, yeah, because it was also Sunday. Yeah. So that's a great example of what you just talked about, right? Even within the cultures, we have different um, food that that connects to our experience in life. Yeah, it's yes. I mean, and also the thing which fascinates me with Southern cuisine, how you know, particularly like the history is is dark, <laughs> but. It, it also so shows the beautiful resilience of people, like, you know, the enslaved people, they brought these cu like cuisines from West Africa. And I don't know if you've ever seen Michael Tweety, like he does a great job of bringing these recipes. But even like, I love the Caribbean that way too. We've been to many Caribbean islands and we just went to St. Lucia. You'll see these influences of the yams and these, the, the ground provisions I learned about this time. And then, you know, like, the people came from Africa, and then, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, the history is like horrible. Like then I, I only learned recently that British people had indentured servants as a way to extend slavery. And they brought all these people from India <laughs> to like the Caribbean and South Africa and different regions. But then you have this beautiful fusion of like African, European, Indian, and then it becomes Caribbean. I, I just think it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Right. It's the resilience, right? We like, listen, you give us some lemon, we make it lemonade. We gonna make lemon meringue pie. We gonna make it <laughs> lemon drops. It's like, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, which is, it's true. I love St. Luca. We do Luke show. We just was out there last year. And, um, and it, it is so important to not only, like you said, if you cannot travel to them, she, you gave a good, good thing is to look up grocery stores because there are around that you can go and and um and and explore it right yeah not long ago we just drove to charlotte just to eat dim sum we found a restaurant through instagram what's it called uh 
I know exactly Weiss, what you talked about. Weiss Bowl. Well, I, but it was in Metropolitan in Charlotte. But that was like really good dim sum. Like, like what you get in like a Chinatown in a big city. I literally just saw that and I saved it because I told my husband, I want to go there for some dim sum. And that's so funny. Look so how good. food connects people. Do you just literally just right there. Now, now could you share some of your insight um, on the connection between mindfulness, nature and wellness, and how incorporating all these elements into our lives can positively um, change our outcome and our well-being? Because that's kind of what you do in your company, right? Yeah, I love mindfulness because it's just, it just kind of teaches us to slow down and notice things around us. And I'd like to often tell clients, like, just like sprinkle moments of mindful moments into your day. It can be as simple as standing outside, listening to the birds sing, notice what's in bloom. Obviously now spring, like this morning I walked, I saw some snowdrops, my first daffodil. It's exciting. And it gives you a sense of calm. And with food, again, slowing down to taste your food, savor it, be thankful for the farmers who've grown it and for the people who've cooked it. Um, and as I say, it doesn't have to be like 20, 30 minute meditations. That's great if that works for you, but I think little tiny, like sometimes I'll be driving along a country road or any road and the sun's setting, I will pull over and just watch the sunset. Why not? <laughs> Rebecca, definitely, we are the same. I have done that coming out of my um, driveway because we live by the lake and we'll, and the lake, sometimes if you catch it just right and so I will just stop and just be so thankful. I'm like, oh my, because it's the one of the most, uh, I think the two amaz most amazing things you can see is a sunrise and a sunset. Yes, the beautiful absolutely beautiful and what's great about that is when we connect with nature we are connecting with the higher being and that is what gives us that importance or that feeling of mindfulness right because we are aware yeah I don't something I also love about when you're in nature it just embraces you like it doesn't ask anything from you when you're like walking in the woods so you can just be yourself. <laughs> like, I think sometimes we all struggle with like how we're showing up in the world and trying to meet people's expectations. And a lot of folks I work with have body image issues. But when you're just in the woods, I don't know, there's something freeing about being in nature to me. <laughs> you just- I love it. Yeah, that, that makes great sense. I never heard it put that way, but that is Totally it. Nature doesn't ask anything of you. Yeah. You can wow, just enjoy it and connect to it. And also, a lot of times these days, people are always sleep deprived. Um, so getting back to like circadian rhythms, you know, getting out in the morning and getting the sunlight if you can, powering off light, light devices in the evenings and trying to get back in sync with nature. I think is good for our well-being. I think that's what I'm going to be trying to do this this thing, you know, it's just really trying to um go to to bed at a nice time and be cuz I'm an early riser. I get up like at 5 in the morning. Oh, um, <laughs> impressive. Because I think it's a it's a it's a magical hour for me. Like nobody is up. Everything is so quiet. So still and then you get to see the sunrise. And you get to actually see the animals come up and wake up. Like, I know the deer are going to be up around 740. Mm -hmm. They coming out, you know, and then the birds. And it's just magical. It's a magical time. And then my husband gets up and he's like, rrr, rrr, and it's over. <laughs> oh, it's good for you that you have that skill. I think a lot of people have lost it. So just trying to... I mean, you could even use your phone if it helps, like by taking pictures. Sometimes when I like take pictures of a pretty flower, like this morning, I was taking a picture of a snowdrop and trying to get the sun light through it as the sun was coming up. If that works for you to stop and even just try and look at it, 
maybe. Or Absolutely. I like to make videos of bees. And Have you been on my Instagram? <laughs> Me too, girl. I, my <laughs> husband said, nobody care about that stuff. I said, I do. Yeah, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. And what's so funny is um, the, the brain does not know the difference between, like you, if you cannot go outside in nature and you're in an office with no windows, even if you had a plant or a fake plant, your brain doesn't know. It could even be a picture of a plant. That's how simple our mind is. It does not even have to be real. It will still give you that same sense of, ah, uh, because yeah. the brain sees it. It doesn't have to be real. And I and I love that you said that because that is a great point. Just use your phone. A lot of times we use, they say technology is so bad. Oh, but we can use it for good. Yeah, I think so. And especially right. it's I've met lots of people around the world from social media. Right. And connecting with people. I used to be really big in food blogging. I don't, I mean, I still put posts on there, but not like before, but I've met lots of people from around the world through, through blogging. And, and you cool are, connect. Was, was great about when you, since you brought up food blogging, you're like a master gardener. You set up school gardens and running small um, farms. And how do you, I mean, just to hear you talk about your passion for nature, um, how do you, put that in work with the form as a dietitian. Like, how do you teach that to the kids and, and the people you work with? Well, I confess, I no longer have the farm. I did it for a couple of years. I used to live in Winston and commute to Yadkin County, which is just, I used to drive like half an hour. I learned realistically, it's very, very hard. I was the only person doing it B business wise, not, not very wise. So anyway, but I learned, <laughs> I learned experience the, firm, the farm and what did you learn from it yeah well I've learned a lot of like I used to go to a lot of farming conferences I used to speak to a lot of you know the old timers out there like the folks who uh, had farms and how it's changed over the years I learned a lot about how food has grown I still am a very big supporter of local farmers I buy a lot of lo local farmers markets I'm really blessed in this area there's a couple of farms that will deliver farm produce to the house it's awesome <laughs> that's really cool what's, what's what's great about that is I am from I'm I'm a daughter of a farmer raised on a farm my whole life my dad still lives on a farm and I go home and um I I am uh, I mean I am as country as country could be so when you was talking about the farm I'm like oh my god that is so cool. So how do you use that experience though? How did you integrate that with teaching with the children and, and how, you know, the dietitian part of it? Yeah, the school garden was fun. Unfortunately, I think that stopped too. It's very hard to keep volunteers in these kind of things. And also we moved house. So we left that school. Um, but you know, what's really cool, like with kids, the more they're involved in cooking, like, you know, you know doing cooking classes you know airbnb do online cooking classes i tell this to clients all the time you go to experiences and you can take classes with people all over the world i think we did one from somebody from france we did sushi with somebody in japan we did vietnam and like they will send you the list of the ingredients and then like we're doing now they will literally have you or other people and cook it with you and they share their culture at the same time oh, um, that and awesome. I've gone on the tangent. Uh, but kids, so yeah, the more you expose oh. them to cooking, trying new foods, visiting global grocery stores. My daughter loves going to Super G and Greensboro. It's a huge Asian grocery store. Um, growing food. Those kids in that school would like eat raw Swiss chard or they will literally would just, cook. even though you think, wow, that's going to be a little interesting. They would eat it, or I'd sometimes just grow like a you know a rugula because I wanted to see the expression because it's kind of spicy. Or I'd get like heirloom tomatoes, tomatoes from right. local farmers, like cool, knobbly, different colored ones. And people, parents would sometimes message and say, "My kid never ate tomatoes until they saw these cool heirloom ones." So it's exposure, and, and that's. 
exactly it. And I think that's what's so special about you, Rebecca, is that you take your love for travel and 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 your the global cuisine and embrace all the different cultures and how it it provides a well-being, a holistic well-being. Um, now, what made you come up with that? Like, how did you say, oh? I don't know. I think if you have curiosity, it just will come naturally. Right. You and, said and, that, though. You said that when you were a kid, you brought them home to. Yeah, I mean, I married an Indian, too, I guess. So I've been with, with an, an Indian family for over 20 years. So I've been to India many times. And. I don't know. It's just it just enriches you, I think. And also, I think when you show a genuine interest in people's food and culture, they feel touched and they're happy to share. We like when we were in Saint Lucia recently. I found like a restaurant. I always try and look through blogs or YouTube's and try and find local places. And they had all these, you know, those round provisions, all these interesting root vegetables that I don't routinely and I didn't know what they all were. So I went up to the <laughs> The, the the folks at the front of my daughter's like with my plate and I'm like what are these <laughs> and then right afterwards I labeled it all in a picture you know taro cassava sweet potatoes and yeah if you can do like walking tours or you know meet with locals you learn so much too that's a great example. That's a great thing. You know, what's so funny is when we were in the BVI, we went to where the soggy dollar was, you know, made and foxies. It's it's, it's uh, the British Virgin Islands and it was so beautiful. And um, we went there and of course we were like the only chocolate drops that was visiting. Right. So the locals first stopped by and was like, hey, you got family here? And we're like, no. And then they said, oh, you visit. They got so excited. It was a school teacher. She took our pictures oh. so that she could show the students because the students said only white people come here. <laughs> so she was <laughs> so excited to show them. And then when we went to the restaurant, they brought us to the back and they showed us the trees and they gave us fruits. And so oh, you're right. We amazing. learned how it was so amazing. It looked like a kind of a pear thing until you opened it up and it had all these different little seeds. I actually did take a picture of it. I'm going to have to bring it up. And it, it was like their apple. So you are right. I am. I am so happy you brought that up. You know, when you travel, Rebecca said it best. Try to really embrace the the native cuisines and, and i think you have to make a conscious effort sometimes to do that i mean we 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 do a mixture of all kinds of travel right where some sometimes you stay in hotels but these days it's pretty much all airbnbs it's just more convenient the cool thing about airbnbs you can sometimes look to stay in neighborhoods rather than like historic centers because then you can go to the local grocery stores you often can like chat to locals when the kids were small, when we traveled, I always go to local parks and chat to people in the parks. And um, this time in St. Lucia, we went to an Airbnb in a little fishing village. It was it was a little bit rough around the edges. There was a handful of, in that case, there wasn't many white people. Right. A handful, pretty much me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a handful, if I'm a handful, okay. Well, you know, uh, I think, I mean, we visited those high-end resorts for coffee or to use the beaches because the beaches are public. So you can't, they can't stop people going to them. Um, right. And then the kids at the airport, they said, oh, this is where all the foreigners are. We didn't see any. <laughs> and we, yeah, because it. we wanted you to have that experience. Right. And that's the, that's the gift I have when I go to India because my family's there, right? I get the India experience. I've like never been authentic. To India, but I definitely want to. I definitely want to go there. And 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 what I love about you know what you bring to the dietitian um area, right? To being a registered dietitian and and what I love is that you bring the different and and that's what's great about all of it. We all have a different perspective. And the fact that you have 
brought it in to, to use mindfulness daily into your daily life can reduce stress. It can, you, you were saying all these things. So can you give us three things that you gave us so many tips, like go to your local groceries, you know, grocery store. If you're not able to travel, go to one of those. I mean, you talked about the Airbnb cooking class. I mean, you've given us so many tips already to really incorporate the um, experience of different cultures in your nutrition. Um, can you give us a couple of more tips on like today, I wanna start being more diverse and embracing different cultures. Um, what do you suggest? Yeah, so maybe visiting restaurants is a good way because then you're gonna have it cooked, hopefully by people from those countries. Um, right. the, the local food markets and asking people how do you cook this? So most people would know, sometimes they don't, depending on that. I mean, and then food blogs, following people who write food blogs. I mean, these days it's amazing. I was just saying this to my daughter. My daughter's 15. Of course, the kids are half British, half Indian American, um, but they seem to really like Asian food. Like she made this dessert, like a sagu, which is like tapioca pudding with mango, and lychee jelly, and she found it, I guess, from Instagram. And we went to Super G, got the ingredients. And then the same day, she made beef bulogi, uh, like a Korean dish. We went to Korea la last summer. That was amazing. And um, yeah, so following blogs and creators who are from those countries. And oftentimes, they're passionate and they will ask answer questions. The cool thing with the videos, you can stop them and follow them step by step. And then just making friends with people from other countries. Like, I really love the fact my my kids have diverse friend groups. That's important. And, and I think, like you said earlier, when you learn other people's food, they feel the connection. And that's all we want. That's all we're here for is a connection, to feel seen, valued, and being heard. And so how do we follow you, Miss Rebecca? How do we stay in contact with you? So the website is anchorednutritiontherapy.com. I've been writing a lot of blog posts in the last few years on all kinds of topics. I do IBS and family nutrition. So sort of like, and I put, when I find good podcasts, I'll have to link yours. And, you know, articles, I'll keep sharing them on Facebook and Instagram. So Facebook and Instagram too. And tell us again, how do we connect? How do we find you on Facebook? It's just anchor nutrition therapy for all of it. All of it. We will be connecting. We were following. But before we wrap this up, I want to ask, because you know that this, this is all about, uh, my whole platform is about living fit. And when I say fit, I mean focus plus intentional equals transformation. And I think that, that, and that's why you're on here, because I think that's exactly what you did about bringing the cultures together and embracing the different taste of all these different worlds. And it's just, look, I'm I'm salivating right now. I'm like, <laughs> what I'm eating? <laughs> I'm ready to eat right now. <laughs> so, you know, and so thank you so much for doing that. We really appreciate you and um, we'll be staying in contact for sure. But how do you... Rebecca, take care of you. How what does your self-care look like? Yeah, mindful, mindful moments. Um, and like I always walk. I'm very, I mean, I live in the country too. I live in Puff Town, so it's like a little bit north of Winston. I always walk in the woods every day. And this morning, I as I said, I pause to see the sun rising and see the flowers coming up. And um, I mean, I mean, I cook a lot too. I think so, it helps if you if you cook. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to, it, it, I'm going to incorporate that because I'm not a big, I mean, I do cook, but I don't, I don't think I, but I think what I'm going to do and we, let's just ask everybody. Like, I think you said if we can um, put one new flavor a month, try something new, right? Yeah. Even I say to folks like leftovers is like your best friend. You don't have to cook from scratch every day. 
even if you cooked and had leftovers, cooked and had leftovers, even if you aim for three times a week, that's great. So it, do, it doesn't have to be perfect. And right. you should have fun with it and embrace that sometimes it will be good, sometimes it will be bad, but it's it's fun. It's Learn. an adventure. It's an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming on and talking to us because this has been so great. And follow Rebecca. Like she said, she has so many different articles about um, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, and what else? What else? Because I was on there today. I was talking. I really I mean, like family nutrition. And I like to give people tips on how to raise their kids to be intuitive eaters, to trust their bodies, and to like to cook. Um, I'm really proud that both of my kids have an interest in cooking and are cooking because I meet a lot of adults who never learn this skill. And like the ability to cook is kind of like the gateway to good nutrition. Without those skills, it's real, it's much harder, in my opinion. That's it. That's all that's that's we could end the whole show on that because that is fact. <laughs> Jax. <laughs> Thank you so much again. And for everybody out there, you know, it's your girl, Elizabeth Colon, and I want you to live fit. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Miss Fit One Lifestyles. Listen, when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled, overwhelmed, and overstressed life, and you're ready to live the fullest, richest, and healthiest life by gaining more confidence, more energy, and more clarity, living in your best self, you know what to do, right? Go ahead, go to my website, misfitone.com. Sign up for our online courses, Creating Healthy Habit, so that you too can live fit, focus, move with intention, and transform your life.